greetings to you from Western Theological Seminary. My name is Travis West. I am an associate professor of Hebrew and Old Testament here at Western, and it's a privilege to have an opportunity to share a few thoughts with you. I'd like to talk about a psalm, just one verse from one psalm, but to preface it, I want to draw from one of my favorite Old Testament scholars by the name of Ellen Davis. <clears throat> she described the Psalms as Israel's icons. And what she meant by this is that icons are, are largely unfamiliar to uh, most of us in the Protestant and Reformed traditions. Uh, but what an icon is, is it's, it's an image uh, a, a painting uh, or a drawing, but it's an image, a, a sort of sacred image that functions as a, a vessel for prayer. And the, the icon is almost like a window and you kind of look through it, you pray through it, and in that process enter more fully into God's presence. And the Psalms are very similar. They are uh, they're poems, and like all poetry, they're rich in images. And so through words, the Psalms present us with images that awaken our imagination and usher us more fully into God's presence. And not so much to learn more about God. The words in the Psalms don't necessarily or primarily teach us things about God, but they they invite us to experience the presence of God. Like Barbara Brown Taylor once said, we don't necessarily need to learn more about God. We just need more God. And the Psalms can help. So the Psalm I'd like to reflect on is uh, verse 5 of Psalm 37. In most English translations, Psalm 37, verse 5, reads like this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do it. I imagine it's somewhat familiar to you. But a lot has been lost in translation for this psalm. The image in the Hebrew is, is iconic in the sense of opening a window through which we can enter God's presence. And it's iconic in a way that is very different from the English translation. It's one of my favorite verses to talk to people who don't know Hebrew about because it's one of the ways that, uh, it's, a, it's a way of demonstrating the importance of continuing to teach the original languages in seminary. Because it's a, an example of how uh, I mean, the English translation is fine, but when you can go beyond it to the original, all of a sudden, wow, it just sort of pops open in a way that really couldn't be captured in translation. Like they say, all translators are traitors um, because you, can, you simply can't translate all of the meaning from one language into a different language. Um, that's not to say our translations are bad. Our translations are amazing, actually. Uh, but how much better to be able to read the original. Okay, enough about that. So, Psalm 37.5, in a, a, a really rough translation of the Hebrew, reads like this. Roll your path onto the Lord. Trust upon him, and he will do it. Roll your path onto the Lord. Trust on him, and he will do it. Now that's a little bit different from commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do it. Right? There's, a, there's two very significant shifts. One is the initial verb, and another shift is an important preposition. So let me talk about the verb first. So uh, the Hebrew image that's created is uh, an image of a person rolling a path out onto the ground. Uh, so uh, 
in English translation, the idea of committing your way to the Lord is is a, a, a fairly abstract thing. It's, some, it's something you kind of do in your mind. You're, you're going to like really believe in something. You're going to commit to doing something. Um, you know, you're, to commit your way is, is a pretty abstract concept. But the idea of rolling your path out is very concrete, very physical, very embodied. It's something, it's an action that you do in the world. And uh, the, the, the idea of the path is one of the Bible's favorite metaphors for the life of discipleship. And here Psalm 37.5 is giving us a picture, an icon of the life of discipleship. What, is it, what does it look like to live our lives uh, in, uh, before the face of the Lord? It looks like rolling our paths out upon the Lord. So the, to probe the image further, if we're rolling out our path onto the Lord, where is the Lord? The Lord is not up somewhere in a celestial sky. The Lord is the ground upon which our path unfolds. The Lord is the landscape on which our life is lived out. The sure ground holding us up, the, the, the foundation of the promise in Psalm 121 that the Lord will not let our foot slip, that every footfall goes on the sure foundation of the Lord of the universe as we roll our path out upon him. And the second half of the image reinforces the first half. In English, the preposition is in. So trust in the Lord and he will do it. Again, this is a kind of intellectual sense, right? I, I believe in or I trust in the Lord. But the Hebrew says to trust upon the Lord. Because you're walking on the Lord. Your path is rolling out on the Lord. You, you don't, if you're going to walk the path of life, the only option you have, the only possibility is to trust. And so this psalm depicts the life of discipleship as a life of trust. That simply to walk, to live, is an act of trust. And it's an act of trust built on the sure foundation of God's goodness, of God's steadfastness, of God's presence, and God's love. So I invite you to roll your path out on the Lord, to trust on God, for he will do it. Amen?